Your Guide to Fake Crystals, Episode 1, Asterism. Now, you may or may not be familiar with asterism. It's something you don't see every day, at least in the real world. But for those of you that don't know what it is, I'm going to give it a brief explanation. Now, asterism, which is essentially the Greek word for star, is a concept or feature present within particular gemstones that have been cut or polished. This is basically where fibrous inclusions exhibit a concentration of refracted or reflected light in the shape of a four or sometimes six pointed star. What's basically happening is light is essentially being reflected from what are known as lamellae, which are collections of fine sheets of material held adjacent to one another. These have occurred in pairs or from extremely small rutile inclusions occurring at the sub-microscopic level. Now, in common conversation, asterism is usually evoked in the context of corundum, which are things like sapphire or ruby. However, asterism can on occasion occur in cabochons across various forms, ranging from garnets, spinels, chrysoberyls, etc., etc., where they're collectively referred to as asterated, which is a fun word to throw around as you let the monocle fall dismissively from over your eye at each and every dinner party. Now, what really needs to be understood in the context of buying asterism or even seeing asterism being floated in front of people on the internet, asterism is super rare. It does occur naturally. It is a phenomenon that can occur within gemstones fairly organically, but that's super, super rare. It's difficult to really articulate or put into words quite how rare to the point that when you see suppliers with oodles of them, it should raise your eyebrow so high that it literally goes past your scalp and ends in the back of your neck. Now, your reaction to this may very well be, but Luke, somebody sold me an asterism and they assured me that it was real. Well, I'm very sorry to say that that little exchange was characterised by something that we generally understand to be lying. Now, if you have been sold a stone exhibiting asterism and have been assured that it is natural, in 99.9% .9 of cases, the person who said that is either lying or wrong. Like many things that you see within the crystal industry that you will casually assume, well, they couldn't possibly fake that. They can. In fact, it's not really even that difficult. So it's faked using a process called diffusion treatment. Now, in this process, a substance such as titanium or chromium is diffused into the crystal through a heat treatment. Now, microscopic needle-like inclusions that are oriented in a specific direction are induced with this treatment. These inclusions can then reflect light in a way that creates an asterism effect within that crystal. Now, there is one country in particular that is a prolific offender for this, but I won't name it because I won't insult your intelligence and assume that you don't already know. But I'll give you a clue. It's not Greenland. Now, what needs to be conveyed is the fact that Although this is generally considered throughout the industry to be an extension of an underlying treatment, that's not necessarily an objective bad. If you don't mind, that's absolutely fine. They are very pretty. I own some. I've sold some. But if someone is conveying it to you that they are natural, that is mis-selling. So when you're Assuming you're buying a natural product, it's not fair, right, or ethical, or even technically legal under the Trades Description Act for someone to be telling you that it is natural when it is, in fact, almost certainly not. Something else that's probably important to be conveyed before you go running off and shouting at the person who sold you an asterated stone is that not every seller who sells these knows that they've undergone a treatment. Distributors, in my experience, will almost always know they've undergone a treatment, but they don't necessarily always have that conversation with the people they're selling them to, or in many situations, they bend the truth when they are having a version of that conversation. So please exhibit 
an amount of patience and tolerance with these people because assuming you're telling the truth is not the same as lying. Thank you for watching that video. Now, my name is Luke and I'm one of the writers here at Salt Shack. Now, what we do here is we teach people geology, mineralogy, gemology, archaeology, paleontology, and all manner of ologies as it pertains to very interesting things that come out of the ground. We'll teach you how something forms or how it gets its color. We'll tell you how to identify it. We'll tell you diagnostic techniques. We'll tell you all about fakes and we'll tell you the history and maybe mythology and how indelibly etched many of the things that we sell are into ancient folklore and the stories of very interesting civilizations. Now, if you want to better understand these things in order to have a more well-rounded understanding of very cryptic subjects or to better insulate yourself from many of the duplicitous practices that go on within the crystal industry, then why not follow us and join the club?